Like so, that. so, so this is a prayer song, an Ojibwe prayer song, and it was it's it was sung by where it, we're told it came from was the when the first father, mo, father, father and mother were going about naming things, they understood that every breath was a prayer. It was a relationship with the Creator who was allowing them to breathe every breath, and so they're saying this is a great house. Anything you bring, I accept. And he's saying, Creator, come into me. Creator, come into me. Now, I so for for those who say that we are just you know, people who pound sticks on rocks, listen to the words, listen to the words of the melody at the end. There are those that hear these all across Native America, but listen to it and then go listen to all the Indian songs. You hear the same thing. Don't forget we're sacred and we love you too. And we want to be a part of the family as well. And we don't want to be forgotten. And we want to be able to wake up from our genocide. And so I just don't want to share this song with you because it's always meant something to me every day. <clears throat> Again, don't judge me for my voice, okay? Here's what I got. So, Aya Gichi Dawe Bushke Gin. Aya Gichi Dawe Bushke Gin. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yah. Aya gichi dawe bushke gin. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yah. She miigwech. Thank you. Well, it was too short. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep repeating it. Move your feet. And keep repeating it. I'm looking at the scroll as you're singing that, wondering if you're singing the songs, singing the song of the scroll, but you probably when, are. When you see us hold the scroll out and you see us start singing the story, yeah. just remember that video where I was with the, the rabbis in New York and they took me into their 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 big sacred hall where they have literally their, their oldest tour. They're not in Jerusalem. They're there in New York City. People don't realize that. And they pulled out this big lambskin, lambskin. They write it on lambskin and they laid it down and the elders circled around and pushed me right up to the front, right in front next to it. And I was there with Elder Wawati and Ogichi Da'a Jer Peltier, who's going to win the chairmanship in Turtle Mountain by a landslide, a landslide. And, uh, and, uh, and they, they pulled it out and they started reading it. Do you think they're like, and it came to pass, they are singing, they sing it. Because as you're told to wear your Sunday best, we're also told to speak your best. And the best way to speak is with song, especially when you're reading the words of God. And they sing those words the same as us. And so we, that's what we will do. We will sing it. And then I will share what it means in English. And I will tell you what each icon means on it, because it's your right. If I am coming to you to affirm what you have, right? You should be able to go anywhere else you see that symbol and that phrase is the same. So then you can see the stories in the other scrolls or in the other stones and read it yourself. Read it yourself. Sing it yourself. So, hey, if people don't like it, they just have to learn to love it. You know, it's the way it is. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be their friends. I'm trying to speak the truth and hoping that if I touch their hearts, they'll relax, man, relax, you know, and, and just practice their faith, you know, and forget, remember the Ojibwe, they're the elder brother gave them that. And he said he was the keeper of the faith. Google it. They were the keepers of the faith. What faith? The faith, the great peacemaker gave us what faith? The faith the people of the star gave us 2,500 years ago when they showed up in a boat in the St. Lawrence River, frozen, hello, Heartlanders, frozen, and they came off and they knew we were there, so much so that they even knew that that great chief from my do dem, who ran the trading routes and the communication outside of the nation to put antlers on his head, where they established our matrilineal line in my clan by leaving those two girls no one can say that doesn't exist. All my grandmothers back were called women of the star, star women. So much so that whether they were in the Assiniboine, the Cree, or the Anish, or the Ojibwe, that was their title, Machi Kwan Sutinawasis. 
to call me good. So people need to really calm down. And just remember, like Brian, I'm telling you, if the Orthodox rabbis don't have a problem, it, it should be the saints who are the ones rejoicing that uh, we're going to have harmony in North America. Like, really? And and, and we, this should be something that shouldn't be people losing their minds on. You can cut this up however you want, but people should be, like, living their faith just a little bit. I agree. Bit. Yeah. yeah. Let me show you... Uh an artifact that came from Burroughs Cave. Does this look, look like the Midday the Wind? The star? Yeah, the, so that's one way That's one way to draw one of the stars, but there's actually two. But I understand, so this would be the, when the people of the star came, they, they made their symbol, okay? And then they taught us to remember who we were. And then we made the symbol. Okay. And there was a period of time where they were teaching us. This wasn't like, oh, you just woke up one day and realized it. Listen, the Latter-day Saints got the Book of Mormon that we can't teach them. Okay, We didn't have anything at the time. So we both were writing these things. And then before they left, because they left, they put them over each other. But how they did that was they taught us how to draw it. And we do this in the lodge. Two sticks. There's a saying. And what it means is two sticks. And they become one in all directions because we knew they knew that their people were scattered in all directions. All right, well, LDS should be thinking two sticks. Oh my gosh, what's well that uh, we're saying two sticks? Well, hello. It's also the symbol of Melchizedek. It should also remember that if 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 we said that 70 times seven generations or 10 times seven generations, and a generation would have been 30 years, the same as the, the sun or sorry, the moon, and people say, what does that mean? Well, I just want to clarify this real quick. But if you do uh, uh, 70 times 30, you have 2,100 years. That's 600 AD or 600 BC, you know? And where do we get that? Because we're, we align with nature. Who established nature? The creator. And he said that he gave within man, and we've granted, we have laws that have changed this to allow kids more time to grow. But nature moves children into puberty in their mid-teens. So if under natural law, which is the law people were living all the way up in the 1800s, you're having children in your teenage years. My mother had me in her teenage years. By the time you're 30, your child now is capable of having children, another generation. That's how we recognize this. Oh, we see unity between even the moon cycle and the cycle of a generation appearing with our children. Okay. And so these are things to, well, we do that. And it's, that's the same time period. Right. So, you know, the people need to remember, you know, who let, what are they saying left Jerusalem? They're saying that, but the Mulekites, ML, but they didn't have vowels, MLK. Okay. And what's the symbol of our people? It's that eight pointed star. That's the symbol of Melchizedek, MLK. So, we're just magically doing what you're doing with your Melchizedek priesthood because we're just like, we got lucky. We got lucky. Yeah, there's, an, there's enough that even those artifacts that everyone said are fake that you, I presented to them, by the way, that you're showing with the Jewish writings. Even Rabbi, Dr. Michael Shulman, who's right there in Jerusalem, and they gathered on it. He said, you know, some of these, some of those are before the flood. Some of those are from before the flood. They're even admitting it now, too. Things to think about. Okay, you can see here on the mahomamre.org, which has the Hebrew Bible, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 18, where we've got An Melchizedek, king of Salem. And here in Hebrew, we've got Wa for And, Maleki, my king, Tzedok, righteousness. So that is the literal meaning of the name Melchizedek in the Hebrew language.